Alabama, Ms. Sewell, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to honor one of America's most prolific and self-taught artists, Mr. Thornton Dial of Bessemer, Alabama. Today, at the age of 86, Thornton Dial has lived, worked, and created art in Alabama for his entire life. From childhood, Dial was creating symbolic, dense pieces of art by using away pieces of objects, anything he could find in his environment, pieces of wire, scrap metal, bones, tree roots. He used his environment to define his environment. Dial's work provides a forceful and compelling narrative of the most insidious challenges and remarkable triumphs of African American history in the Deep South. His work contains layers of rich history and reflects on race and class struggle that he witnessed in the Deep South. Dial rose to prominence in the 1990s while in his 60s through his large-scale assemblages, paintings that were made of scrap metal, pipes, very interesting visual interpretation of the history and politics that he saw around him. Dial is described as having been one of the most amazing art biographies in art history. He is described as being a very quiet man, a listener who dressed impeccably. What he lacked in terms of formal education, he more than made up for in his highly visual and historic vocabulary. Dial's creative brilliance is truly eliminating and inspiring. Dial has stayed in Alabama in the heart of the 7th Congressional District to live and work his entire life. He was born in 1928 in Sumter County, Alabama. He was one of 12 children. And in childhood, he built his own toys because, as he said, we didn't have much. Thornton began full-time farming at the age of five. In his early teens, he was sent to live with his aunt in Bessemer, Alabama, where he attended Sloss Mining Camp. His peers made fun of him for his large size and for being, quote, country. His teachers told him that he would never amount to much. I want you to know that we in the 7th Congressional District are extremely proud of Dial because we know that he really interpreted what he saw around him in the Deep South. He interpreted it in a very creative way, and it only now is he gaining such preeminence for that form of art. Dial never really made a living as an artist. He worked for many years, over 30 years, at Pullum Standard Factory. Yes, he made boxcars for a living. People have fought for freedom all over the world, he said. I try to show that struggle in my art. It is a war to be fought, and we're trying to win it. In his time off from the Pullum factory, Dial would escape to his garage and backyard and create masterpieces out of whatever he could find. Out of fear that people would laugh and uh, laugh at his art, he would bury his work. Later, he would dig it up and deconstruct it and reuse materials for new masterpieces. Dial began to dedicate himself to his artwork in 1981. He founded Dial's Metal Patterns, a garden furniture business with his sons in 1983, after the Pullum factory closed. Dial's handmade designs were discovered by Lonnie Holly, a neighboring black artist, in 1987. Holly bought uh, Bill Arnett, a artist uh, himself and a collector of African American art from Atlanta, to see Dial's work. Arnett helped him to get national attention about attention about his art. The two, finally uh, working together, agreed on a price for his fir first sculpture. Initially, Dial offered Arnett the piece for twenty dollars, and Arnett refused a low price. He said to Mr. Dial that this piece deserves more than $20. They agreed on 200 This was the first transaction that Dial had as an artist. Dial's work has been a subject of ex exhibitions across this country at the New Museum of Contemporary Art and the American Folk Art Museum in, in New York. His work can be found in more than 15 public collections, including those uh, among others, the High Museum of Art in Atlanta and the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. Many, many people now collect his art. 
an art form that was considered outside art. Now it's considered world-class art. With no formal training and education, Dial's powerful artwork stands out in a world of highly degreed artists. Dial continues to create art today, and this weekend he will be honored by his hometown of Bessemer, Alabama. He will be honored as a great American Gentlemen's hero time and great expired. American artist. And I, and I ask my colleagues to join me in honoring this great, wonderful Alabama treasure, Thornton Dial. Gentlewoman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry.